I would love. All right. Let's quick to it. Blackburn Mayor. You guys hear about this Five Pillars thing? No. It's UK. It's Islamic news, basically. Yeah. Blackburn Mayor Suleiman Khanat celebrates LGBTQ culture at a Pride event Saturday. Go renew your shahada and make it over. What is wrong with you? What is wrong? With a nice big sunnah beard and everything. What's wrong with you? And he's posting with an Instagram frame. You see this? Yeah. What is wrong with people, by the way? You're going to sell your deen for other people's doing it? You're not even benefiting from it, right? Yeah. Well, benefiting by staying mayor, I guess. Okay. All right, how are we doing on YouTube? We're, we're on YouTube now. Let's go and mute this and see how our YouTubers are doing. Don't they style those YouTubers? Where is it? Channel. Boom. All right, who we got? Hamza Hussein. Hamza A. And let's check out the Insta. And he's wearing a gold chain. Of course, it's not real gold. It can't be real gold. It's one thing to sell the your Dean for Dunya. And it's another thing to sell your dean for other people's dunya, where you're not even the beneficiary. For the Unreal. Not smart. And you have a white beard. That means colossus. You got one foot in the grave. Yes, what I meant. Mr. what I meant. So not uncle, because he's older, right? You got one foot in your grave already. You got a white beard. That means you got grandkids. Don't you want to die on, on Salama in your dean? Peace in your dean? You're going to die having sold your dean for combos? Unreal. Unreal. Mohamed Masoud is here. Pasha International is here. And I'm joined by two guests today. Well, the Wizard of Oz is not a guest, but he's here. Having set up a behemoth. You guys should see what Ryan looks like now. He's got a behemoth, uh, a hacker type of computer this big on the ground, screens all around, you know, they have double screens like this, and all sorts of hacker material that the Wizard of Oz put together, nope, okay, there's an echo, I'm going to say this thing, let's, let's put this in my ear and check, audio, no audio coming up, or maybe it's not, this is not plugged in, Today we're going to talk about Hajj, by the way. Sound is echoey, says Samira Noreen. It should be fine. Now it should be fine. Check it now. Samira Noreen, is it okay? S. Bailey Khan. Sayyid Muhammad Daniel. Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Saud says it's better now. Folks, this guy, he should be ashamed of himself. Mayor of Blackburn, Suleiman, whatever his name is. You should be ashamed of yourself. You have a white beard. You have grandkids. And you're going to sell your dean for the uh, mayoral position? You're going to get elected out anyway. By anyone who has any sense. Any of the Muslims who have any sense. They're going to elect you out of there. Right? Right, for the map picture. What if you shrink that and put it in the top right because there's more empty space in the top right? That might work. Hey, folks, today we're going to talk about Al-Hajj. Okay. And first, we're going to begin with our introduction and dua and dhikrullah and get ourselves composed here and purify our, ourselves from having to see these ridiculous, you know, things that some of the Muslims are doing now as if like there's no Yom al Qiyamah you're not worried about that (sighs) 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم يا عظيم السلطان يا قديم الإحسان يا دائم النعم يا كثير الجود يا واسع العطاء يا خفي اللطف يا جميل الصنع يا حليم لا يعجل صل يا ربي على سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم وارض عن الصحابة أجمعين اللهم لك الحمد شكرا ولك المن فضلا وأنت ربنا حقا ونحن عبيدك رقا وأنت لم تزل لذلك أهلا يا ميسر كل عسير ويا جابر كل كسير ويا صاحب كل فريد ويا مغني كل فقير ويا مقوي كل ضعيف ويا مأمن كل مخيف يسر علينا كل عسير فتيسير العسير عليك يسير اللهم يا من لا يحتاج إلى البيان والتفسير حاجاتنا كثير وأنت عالم بها وخبير اللهم إني أخاف منك وأخاف مما يخاف منك وأخاف ممن لا يخاف منك اللهم بحق من يخاف منك نجنا ممن لا يخاف منك اللهم بحق سيدنا محمد أحرسنا بعينك التي لا تنام وكنفنا بكنفك الذي لا يرام ورحمنا بقدرتك علينا فلا نهلك وأنت ثقتنا ورجاؤنا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين عز خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه وميداد كلماته اللهم إنا نسألك زيادة في الدين وبركة في العمر وصحة في الجسد وسعة في الرزق وتوبة قبل الموت وشهادة عند الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت وعفوا عند الحساب وأمانا من العذاب ونصيبا من الجنة وارزقنا النظر إلى وجهك الكريم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين في كل لحظة أبدع خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته All right, my brothers and sisters, this was Wird, Al-Shaykh, Abi Bakr bin Salim. And you can get this Wird, and this Wird we recite it, you, like a Wird of Adhkar al-Sabah, Adhkar for protection, for dua, general ad'iya, for protection, for rizq, for benefits, okay? And the app is called Al-Khulasa, you type that in, it could be in English you could type it or in Arabic. There are many types of apps. Many apps regarding with collection of this afkar. Okay? And the app, there's no homepage to the app, I think. Here, the app looks like this. Okay? And the Khulasa logo, it actually, bring it up on my iPad, is going to be bigger. The Khulasa logo looks like, but, but, but where is it, where is it, where is it? Here. If, I don't know if you can see this, but you see that there on the side, uh, on the, where am I, right here, see that? That is what the app looks like, and that has in it, Wird Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salim. It's a nice du'a, that's, just, that's what it is, Not, I don't want to say that's it, as if that's a, no big deal, it's a beautiful du'a. Now here's a question for you, do you know how many, how, the words in this du'a are not actually any different than many other adaya. But things of Islamic nature, they spread because of what's called Kabul. Okay? Things spread because of Kabul. Okay? And Kabul is the idea that Allah has accepted the intention behind this. Okay? And that's why you want to read something that has something that it's been around for a long time. It reflects that Allah has accepted the intention behind it. And Allah loves the author. So you have Wird al-Imam al-Nawawi. Wird al-Imam al-Nawawi is also in this app, al-Khulasa. Wird al-Imam al-Nawawi has been going on for a thousand years almost. Well, not exactly a thousand years, much less. Okay, Imam al-Nawawi was what, 700 of the Hijrah maybe? So, 700 years? Show me something that's been around for, how many things do you know has been around for 700 years? So, he wants something like that. The awrads of Sayyidina al-Imam al-Haddad. You want the, these awrads. Now you can make your own dua at any time. But is it guaranteed that Allah Ta'ala has loved you the way He's has shown the qabul for those dua? So we do both. You can make your own dua as much as you want for your own personal business. But the general dua 
the general adhkar for protection, these ulama and mashayikh, they knew exactly what they're putting in there. Okay? And there's kabul has come down. And you're sharing now in a prayer that's being said by so many other people. Okay? So that's the concept and the idea of, of these awrad. And we always, it's, when we do current events, which is part of our deen, is to study what's going on in the ummah. Right? But there's a little bit of a ghafla and a heedlessness that comes upon somebody when you do too much of that. And then you feel that that, that heedlessness and that ghafla and so you feel like you want to clear it out and you clear it out by picking up some of these awrad and some of the awrad are surahs of the Quran such as surah al-Dukhan at night surah al-Mulk at night surah al-Waqa'ah after Asr is the practice of Sayyidina Anas bin Malik okay. any recitation of Quran okay, in the daytime or the nighttime so so that's basically what we're all about here. And if you're someone who, like, you've never heard about this, well, this is what the, our, the Nothing But Facts live stream is all about to, to show you, you know, that this stuff is important, right? And teach you how to do it. And we're going to always say, Wirid did Abu Bakr bin Salim when we want, like when we remember. And every Wednesday, his bin Nasr lil Imam al Haddad. Why? We repeat, by repeating those, eventually you'll memorize them just by viewing, just by being a viewer and watching. Okay, so today, our topic today, we're going to talk about Hajj, but first a word from our sponsors, and we're going to have a word from our sponsors twice. Ryan, you don't happen to have the exemplars pictures, do you? Let's do that later, or if not even today, but um, a word from our sponsors, Mecca Book, oh, you already got pay, uh, Mecca Books, all right, put that up, MeccaBooks.com. And you're going to get a book called Exemplars. It's a really beautiful book. We're, I'm going to uh, be doing some of the interviews for them, interviewing the authors of the biographies about what they did in terms of uh, their lives or how they, how they met these shiuch, etc. But you can get the book at meccabooks.com. They're giving it away. Too. They're giving it away? Giving it away. Hey, Oz, why is the uh, Insta so, bro so close up like that? Weird. They're, get, they're having a giveaway contest. So go to MeccaBooks.com for a giveaway contest. Who doesn't want something for free? Hey, Rob, uh, uh, enroll for me so I, maybe I can get it for free. You have to do a bunch of stuff. You got to do stuff? You have to do stuff. Like, like what? Share, it in share and do all sorts of stuff. Okay. Secondly, it's time for you to study for your SATs. And uh, people of... Eng oh, it must be my fingers that did it. Um... People who are studying for, if you're in England, what do they have in England? What's the tests in England to go to college? We have it, we, for us, we call it the SAT. It's an e -level. They have O levels and A levels and, and stuff like that. All right. What you guys have to do is you're going to, if you want to study, you get an online tutor at professors121.com. Okay. If you are in New Jersey, they can drive out to your home and educate your kids who don't know, who don't have the experience taking these formalized exams that these people do. These people have some serious, as I've said before, there are some serious nerds in this company, right? Serious nerds in this company. That's number two. Number three, you guys. Patreon.com backslash Safina Society. Okay? Okay. Patreon.com backslash Safira Society. On the regular, there are new people coming out and being part of this. You know what we should do one day? We should make credits, right? And everyone who is a Patreon subscriber, right? We actually should roll the credits at the end, right? Like a movie. At the end of every... Hey, that's a great idea. I'm going to have them do that tonight. I want it less like the movies, right? Yeah. Scroll with the names of all these... Uh, people, because I mean they did it, didn't they? They 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 they're part of it, and we're able to to get all this technology with their help. All right, so that is what we're all about today, in terms of our supporters and our subscribers. All right, now what else are we up to today? Okay, we're going to talk about Hajj. Essentially. 
Let's talk about the obligation of Hajj first. This obligation has prerequisites. When we study prerequisites of Hajj, okay, when we study the prerequisites of Hajj, there are prerequisites of it being obligatory, and then there are prerequisites of it being valid. So whenever you study fiqh, there's shurut al-wujub and shurut al-siha, which means this thing is not even obligatory until X, Y, Z happens. Okay. So the shurut there is that it's not even obligatory upon you. You have to be, uh, uh, unless you are balig, aqil, hur, or mustatir. Okay. You have to be these four things. You got to be balig, reach the age of maturity. You got to be aqil. You have to be sane. In other words, you cannot be insane. Okay. You got to be free. I mean, if you're enslaved, if you're in jail, you're not free. So then the obligation is lifted upon you. Okay. And you have to be, you have to have istita. What is istita? What do we mean by istita? That means you are physically capable of going without being harmed and abnormal. What does, what does it, mean it mean in abnormal, abnormal harm? For example, For example at, at any time you could be robbed. robbed. Right? right? So, so that, that doesn't, doesn't count. count. We're, We're talking, talking about, about wars with some, some abnormal, abnormal type, type of harm. harm. Okay. okay. That's, That's number one. Or, or that, that you, you can, can be, be robbed, robbed or, or, or uh, that, that, that you, you could be, be you're, you're not, not safe, safe in, in your, your home. home. Meaning, Meaning that, that I leave, leave my, my home could be taken by oppressors. Again, abnormal because we know that at, at any, any time, time your home can be robbed. So, so the, the idea, idea that, that oh, my home could be robbed is not, that's, that's not, not sufficient. sufficient. It, it means that there's, there's something abnormal, abnormal like, like there's a coup in your country. country. Or, or a, a gang, gang of bandits has moved into the town, right? I guess like in the old days. Some abnormal harm like that. Or that you have an elder that would die in your absence. Let's say your mom will die in your absence. You don't take care of her. Things like that. That's istita. Okay? That's what we mean by istita. So something that w will cause you, will, co will be harm that will occur in your absence, or harm on the way, that is all, we're talking about the abnormal harms, or you don't even have the money. Right? So all of that would negate, okay, the istita. Okay? It would negate the istita. Now, these are the now. Here's a question that comes up in fiqh, and that is, namely, that the question is that if I become able to make hajj, am I obligated to do it right away? Am I sinful if I skip it this year, or am I somebody who am allowed to 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 delay it? Okay. And that's a debated question. And the Madiki Madhab both have strong opinions. Okay? That you are sinful if you're capable and you just don't do it this year, you're sinful. That's one opinion. The other is that you're not sinful. Okay? So there's, it's a debated question in Madiki Fiqh. All right? That covers your basics of the nature of the obligation. Okay? Now, what are the shurut as sihha now the shurut al siha there's always overlap. Okay? So, for example, you might not have to, if you don't have to make hajj, such as you're young, you are, you're balik, you're not balik, you are a slave, for example. Okay? Or you are, okay, in these two cases, and you end up making hajj, it's a nafila. So if a slave or a prisoner, we let him out to make hajj, okay? And then we, he goes back to jail. A slave. Let's, say, let's leave jail aside because jail is different from slavery. Okay? Or a child, a youth. A 12-year-old, he's not bad yet, but he makes hajj. It's nafila for him. It does not count as his obligatory hajj. In contrast... If I 
I'm not able to make Hajj, so I'm, it's not obligatory upon me because I don't have the money. But then someone says, hey, I'll give you, I'll pay for you. And you go, then it counts for him. Okay, so those are, that's the difference uh, between sometimes shurut al siha and shurut al wujub So sometimes it carries over and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Now, the first, there are four conditions, fourth arkan and eight wajibat. You got to pay very close attention to this. There are four arkan. That means, if these four things are not there, your hajj is not even, it's not hajj. You did movements and stuff, but it's not hajj. They cannot be made up in the same way that a fard cannot be, if you forget ruku'ah in salah, you can't make it up with sujood al-sahu. You have to bring a whole new rakah, right? Whereas if you forget a sunnah mu'akkadah, you can make it up with sujood al-sahu, right? So in the same way, hajj is divided between arkan and wajibat. The arkan cannot be made up. If you miss it, you are finished, you're done, you have no hajj. You understand this? Whereas in contrast, the wajibat can be made up by uh, not sujood sahu here, what we call hedi, slaughtering a small animal. Which, unfortunately today, nobody's slaughtering. What we're doing is paying. Okay? So, let me repeat. You have arkan, four arkan. And you have eight wajibat. Okay? And you have six nullifiers. So you're going to memorize these. Okay? Now let's look at what these are. The arkan are as follows. Okay? Al-ihram. And you have to wear, put on your ihram by, number one, making the intention. What are you going for? Are you going for umrah? Are you going for hajj? Are you going for tamattu'ah? You have to make that. Are you going for qiran? What are you going for? So you have to make your intention. And you have to do it before a certain limit, which we call the miqat point, which is namely that there are five cities around Mecca that you must put your ihram before that. It forms like a circle around Mecca or a, a, a five-sided star around Mecca or shape around Mecca. So sometimes you're going to travel past Arabia into the Emirates airport and you're going to make ihram there. That's actually my favorite thing, even though it doesn't make any sense to pass Arabia. Geographically, you're passing Arabia, but you're only passing by about two hours because it has, they have a nice uh, airport where you can make it, put your ihram on. It's really clean and you pray two rakahs. When you put your ihram on, you're making your intention. You are doing tajarrud min al makhit, which means you're taking off clothes that wraps around you and clothes that is, is the sewing is used to wrap around your limb that's the idea that's what you have to get off of take off you should put on as much perfume and cologne as you, or or as you want and remove whatever hairs that you want because you're not going to be doing that and clip your nails because you're not going to be doing that for the rest of your ihram you're not to put on scent remove hairs or clip your nails as much as you want uh, for the entirety of ihram. So you do that beforehand. Okay, You are highly recommended to remove all the hairs that could give you a bad smell or what have you. Clip your nails, Okay, depending on how long you'll be for ihram. Okay, Because the shortest you'll be in ihram is like three days, two and a half days even. And the longest, there's, it could be longer, much longer, depending on what you're going for. Then you pray two rakas. Salah, and you begin your talbiyah by saying, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika lak labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata lak wa mulk la sharika lak. And everyone will start saying that. And it's a beautiful thing. So this is the rukn of ihram. Okay? Now the next rukn that you will do is the most important one. And it is Al-Wuquf Bi'arafah. You have to stand at an area called Arafah. Okay? Which we're going to put a map. You're going to see the whole Hajj. I'm going to give you the list first of the Arkan. 
and then I'm going to give you the map, and we're going to walk through it. When you stand on Arafah, first of all, when do you stand on Arafah? On the 9th of the Hijjah. The 9th of the Hijjah. Okay? Which is called... All right, this is the 9th of the Hijjah. It's called Yom Arafah. Everyone outside of Hajj is fasting. Okay? Everyone outside of Hajj is fasting. And on this day, okay, on Yom Arafah, the obligation is to be there even a pause, the rukun, of the evening. So you're going to go all day. Okay, That's a wajib. But the rukun is to be there for at least a pause in the evening. After the adhan of maghrib. What is the least of a pause? The amount of time that you would spend between two sujood, two sajdas. Still. That's it. That's the bare minimum. So you got to be there for a little bit after maghrib. And everyone is. Okay. So that's Arafah. So remember, Al-Wuquf of Arafah is divided into two parts, the day and the night. The day is a wajib. If you miss the day, you can do Hadi. Remember, anything that is wajib, if you miss it, you can do Hadi, slaughter an animal, and make up for it. But the Rukun you cannot. So the Rukun, in terms of Arafah, the Rukun is any, even sliver in the night, which means after the end of Maghrib. Okay. And we'll see everyone's there after their maghrib for a little bit. The third rukun, you cannot miss this, is tawaf al-ifada. This is the big tawaf of hajj, and it must be after arafah. Okay? Tawaf al-ifada. And it, uh, the tawaf is, of course, seven. And with the Kaaba to your left. And you start from al-hajr al-aswad. The start point is a wajib. So if you start, let's say hypothetically, say, you know what, I want to start from Hijr Ismail. And you do that. So you fulfilled your rukn, but you, you still owe hadi because the start point is wajib. Okay, you have to start from a rukn, uh, uh, Hajr al-Aswad. So you do tawaf al ifada seven times, seven ashwat. You must have wudu to do tawaf. Many people don't know this. Wudu is required to touch for three things, only three things. To touch the full Qur'an, such as this, the full Qur'an, or a juz of Qur'an. If someone gives you a f- five juz of Qur'an or one juz of Qur'an, you must have wudu, okay, to touch it for ibadah. If you are a bookseller, a teacher, you clean up the mosque, and there's masahif all there, it's impossible for you, and it becomes a hardship to say every time you got to make wudu. And at that point, you can... You're allowed to touch the Qur'an without wudu for that person only. The workers in mosques, the workers in bookstores, the teachers who deal with the Qur'an for, like for work every single day. Okay? They can touch the Qur'an to move it only, not to do ibadah. Only for the darura, for the, or for the, nece- the necessity. Okay? You need wudu to pray, obviously, and you need wudu for tawaf. So you're going to make your tawaf seven times around the Kaaba. And this is, of course, the tawaf al-ifadah, which is one of the hallmarks of hajj, and everybody sees that you know, this is the symbol of hajj. And you do this after your wuquf ba'rafa. And then after tawaf, you, there is salah of turakas behind maqam Ibrahim. And then there is sa'i. Sa'i is the fourth rukn of hajj. The fourth rukn of hajj. And you go from Safa, as the Prophet ﷺ said, we begin with what Allah began. Okay. She's saying there's still an echo for some reason. Okay. Safa to Marwa, that's one. And you will see Batn al-Masil, there's two green lights, because Batn al-Masil means that there used to be, the, 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 it used to go like this. Right, it used to be almost like uh, a valley towards the Safa side. It's not the valley was not in the middle; it was towards the Safa side. But they flattened it now, and they just put two green lights, so it's artificial. You artificially run. There's no reason to run because it's flat. The in the past they used to run. Why? Because it's going down anyway. So get momentum, run it down, run it out, basically, run out the downside, get momentum, and it'll be easier for you to go uphill. 
But now they flattened it, so they put two green lights to artificially do this. Okay. So that's the sa'i. And then you make dua on each mountain. You face the Kaaba, you make dua on each, on each hill. And that's it. So those are the four arkan. Now let's take a look at your hajj in order. Okay? Day by day. So that you can be educated on hajj. Anything that we say is wajib. Look, you can put the map now. Anything that we say is wajib. All right? You can expiate it with hadi. But you cannot expiate these four things with hadi. Okay? So let's take a look. Day one. I'm going to pull up the map right in front of me here. I love this map, actually. Okay. Tawaf al-Qudum. What is Tawaf al-Qudum? Tawaf al-Qudum is the Tahiyat al-Masjid. We all know Tahiyat al-Masjid. Tahiyat al-Masjid is when we enter the Masjid, we pray two rakahs or a fard. That is like the greeting of the mosque. Tawaf al-Qudum is when I'm coming for Hajj, coming into Mecca for the first time, I make tawaf. I'm coming for Hajj. Okay? I make tawaf. Tawaf al-Qudum, though, is not obligatory on a couple categories of people. Who is it not oblig- obligated upon? Tawaf al-Qudum is not obligated upon someone who is mutamatta. What does mutamatta mean? Mutamatta means someone who came in a couple days early for Hajj made a full umrah okay so he's greeted the city with tawaf he's done a full umrah not just tawaf he's done a full umrah he comes out of ihram such a person does not have to make tawaf al-qudum okay who else doesn't have to do tawaf al-qudum okay a woman who's on hayd and nifas this is a big misnomer many people mistake this they think that if a woman goes on hajj in hajj, she can't make hajj. It's not right at all. She can make hajj. Okay? She just can't make tawaf. She can't enter the mosque. So the only issue she has is tawaf al-ifada. Because that's a ruk. So how does she do tawaf al-ifada? She does tawaf al-ifada and you follow the shafi opinion on this. Is that she comes out of her ihram and she owes the tawaf later, any time later. Now, if, yeah, if she has to leave. If she's staying, right, she stays in ihram, and when her hayd is over, she takes a ghusl, makes wudu, well, ghusl is wudu. Ghusl always includes wudu. If you, uh, for a woman, always includes. For a man, it does, unless he touches his private parts after he has cleaned the limbs of wudu. Then she goes and she makes tawaf. The Hanafis have their own opinion. She makes tawaf upon Hayd. Very strange. Well, astaghfirullah, I'm not going to even open that can of worms and get myself bombarded with the Ahnaf. But the Shafi'i opinion is that she waits. If her caravan is leaving, she comes out of Ihram and she owes a tawaf later on in her life, any time in her life. But hopefully... Many women in this day and age, they can solve this problem, okay, by taking pills. They can take pills and they can delay their height. If you're a woman and you're going, you're allowed to do this, okay? Now, the, the, the read who asked about hadi, the word hadi is slaughtering a little goat or sheep to expiate for missing a wajib. Remember, we're talking now hajj, where you have to know the four arkan, then there's a list of wajibat, you miss those wajibat, you can expiate, and then there are nullifiers, which we have to talk about the nullifiers. The nullifiers. Anything that, nu- the, certain things will nullify your hajj altogether. Okay? Which we're going to cover. Them. But first, let's talk about your order. So on the 8th of the hijjah, you will enter Mecca, if, you've, if you're entering Mecca for the first time, you do Tawaf al-Qudum. Qudum means arrival. If you've been in Mecca, if you're a resident of Mecca, if you're on Hayd, or if you already did Umrah, and if you're already in Mecca, then you don't have to do Tawaf al-Qudum. Okay? So that's the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. First thing you do is you go to Mina, and you spend Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr. 
five. You spend the whole day there, including the next day. Next day for fetch. And you spend that time in the tent of Minna. And as you can see, you're going southeast, as you can see in the map. This is a beautiful map. Okay. And you spend that time doing ibadah, doing dhikr. Okay. Next morning, after Salat al-Fajr, we all get up again and we go to Arafah. All right. That, this is the big day of Hajj. Okay. This is the big day that we have for Hajj. All right. And this is the day in which Allah has promised the prayers of the believers to be answered and their sins forgiven. This is the greatest day of the year for us. The greatest night of the year for us is Laylatul al-Qadr, which is actually unknown. Like, you don't know when Laylatul al-Qadr is. You have a window of when it could be. But you have to also stay for a moment after the Adhan of Maghrib. Arafah. After doing ibadah all day long, and, du- and let me tell you practically what you do. Practically what you do in Mina and in Arafah is as follows. It's pretty hectic, it's busy, it's hot, there's a lot of stuff going on. You do ibadah for a little bit, then you eat. Then you talk, then you get tired and you take a nap. You will not sleep like normal uh, sleep in Mina from day 8. 9, 10, 11. For these four days, you're not going to have normal sleep. Why do we not have normal sleep? Minna is extremely loud. Okay? Minna is extreme. Assalamu alaikum. Come take a seat next to us. Shini Fantoy is here. Don't trip over any uh, cords, though. Shini Fantoy is uh, skipping work today. What's happening, man? <laughs> How's it going? So called working from home, which Elon Musk has basically. <laughs> Open your computer so that you can log in and, and say that you're working. Yeah. Mar- Mar- <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's so loud in Mina. And the reason it's loud is that there are illegal hujaj every year. And there are people that are disorganized. And there are people sleeping in the streets. Everywhere in Mina. And so they got the the Saudis because they're they're very fond of like aura and spirituality and good mood. <laughs> they have cars going around blaring like uh, sirens and on the mic all day and all night. I was sitting with Mahmoud al-Banna and he was like, it's like a war zone here. I was like, yeah, it is a war zone. You feel like you're in a war zone. You do not feel at peace at all. And I thought to myself, you know what? Number one, maybe that's a reflection of the state of the ummah. It's war, right? But also, maybe we're at war with our sins here, right? And the blaring of these uh, guys in the mic, sirens will go on 24 hours a day. It will just, you cannot be, get a normal sleep. That's number one. Number two, the, the way they air condition the North American tents is sort of absurd. They take the air, they wall conditioners full blast, right? Full blast. And you're freezing inside the tent, boiling outside the tent. So it's not good for your lungs. It's yeah, terrible. You're get sick from that, right? I always get sick from these things. I hate this thing. And you can't cover your head either, mm-hmm. right? Because you're in ihram. Yeah. Ihram, you cannot cover your head. The ihram of women is nothing, essentially, except the intent. And no perfumes. And no removing of hairs. But clothes-wise, they can cover their head, but they cannot cover their face. They cannot cover their face. In Tawaf, you can't cover your face. What happens if you like, put on perfume by accident or you pluck your hairs? How do you uh, make up for that? Hadi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is this the same for Umrah? Plucking hair by accident, if intentional. For example, I forgot and I plucked a hair off my face is different from I was just scratching and a hair came off. Yeah. That's not plucking hair. Mm-hmm. Plucking hair like accidentally forgot. Hadi. We'll, we'll get that to that. Those different things. Those different, different breaks in Ihram they'll have different rules. So now, you're in Mina, and you can only eat when you're given food. So that's another thing that breaks up. Like, you don't eat when you want. You eat when you're given food. And you're herded off to another room to eat. So you don't want to miss your meal times. So there's a lot of reasons why you'll, your, your pattern of, of regular life, which is fine. It's, you're there for Hajj. You're not there to have a, a regular day, right? You're there for something new. And so... 
the other thing that happens in Mina, mainly not on the 10th, not on the 8th of the Hijjah. The 8th of the Hijjah is called Yom uh, Tarwiya. Tarwiya. And usually what happens is that there are people visit each other in the tents. Oh, I heard so-and-so is there. So you get visitors. But usually that doesn't happen on the, on the 8th because people are still just discovering where everyone is. Now you go to Arafah and you spend the whole day at Arafah. Arafah is also like tents everywhere. Right? It's tents everywhere. Many people think it's a sunnah to go to Jabal al-Rahmah for us in the Madiq Madhav. Yes, the Prophet did, but it, not as a sunnah. It's not a sunnah to go on a big hike to Jabal al-Rahmah and exhaust yourself. This is not the sunnah. The sunnah is to stay in one spot and do ibadah. As much as you can make dua, remember all your loved ones. And on Yom Arafah, when we're here, we're going to fast and do the same thing. Okay. And we also, we, we mimic the hujjaj from the time of Muharram, uh, Adhul Hijjah starts until Eid, we don't clip our nails and shave, remove our hairs. Talaban lishaf, seeking to be a little slightly disheveled. How are you supposed to be disheveled? You're not supposed to be perfectly combed. You are a pilgrim begging for God's forgiveness and you are asking for stuff. Remember, this is forgiveness. This is the greatest thing you can get. But people have desires and needs that are motivating their ibadah. Okay. Now, third step. On the night, on that night, so the ninth is over. The night has fallen and now it's the tenth of Muharram. Uh, of the, I keep saying Muharram, I don't know why. Dhul Hijjah. You go to Muzdalifah. And you go, the sunnah for us is to go to Muzdalifah for at least a moment. At least a sit down. For the Ahnaf, it's until Fajr. For the Shafi'iyah, it's half the night. So they, now why is this beneficial? It's beneficial because it allows for different traffic patterns. Because you you're literally got such a mass of movement that by having this ikhtilaf, this difference of opinion of how long do we stay in Muzdalifah, it eases a little bit of the traffic. So the Madikiyah only have to stay a moment, right? That's it. Sit down, have tumat nina for the same amount of time that between two sajdas. That's it. The Shafi'iyah, half the night. The Ahnaf, until Fajr. Okay? They stay until Fajr. Now in Muzdalifah, what do you do? You gather your pebbles. Because there's something called the Rami al Jamarat. Rami al Jamarat. Okay, you have to gather your pebbles and you stay at Muzdalifah for that period. And I'll tell you what actually happens. You're not going to leave Muzdalifah right away, like the Maliki say of the bare minimum. You're not going to do that. You're going to go to Muzdalifah. You're going to be tired. If your Hajj leader is a generous guy, he goes and he gets you al bake. Okay? <laughs> El Bake is like the best fried chicken joint that's there. They they monopoly. They got control, and it's uh, it's really it's really good. El Bake, and he has got a garlic sauce, and he's got bris biscuits, and he's got Pepsi, right? And uh, Coke or Pepsi, whatever it is, and they get that stuff, and you will just erase it completely because you're tired and hungry. And the food that they give you there. Alhamdulillah, we have food. That's the first thing. So it's not to complain. But sometimes when it's like pre-packaged and it's mass-made, you don't really have the appeal, so you don't eat as well as maybe you should. Alhamdulillah, we have food. Whatever food they give us is fine. But uh, there is a, a, a sort of little craving, secret craving everyone has for al bake And he has pop-up stands everywhere, right? He must be on good... Uh, uh, yeah, a good side of MBS to be able to get these pop-up stands. Now, Hamza is saying that it's highly likely that al is not the biha. I don't know about that. Anything is possible, number one. Anything is possible in the world of global supply chain. Anything is possible. But it's probably not going to be likely if the guy is a Muslim and the owner is telling you this is the biha. Is it going to be hand slaughtered? No, it's going to be machine slaughtered. But machine slaughtered is permissible. The machine itself does not negate the matter. Maybe for the ahnaf, that they have the concept of ittisad, like he has to be connected to the animal or something like that. But for us in the Madikiyah, even when I went to Chicago 
Dar es Salaam, Mufti Min Hajj. I said, what's the difference between a machine and a long knife? A knife that's all the way to across the room. He said, we don't have an issue with the machine. We have the issue of does the machine execute its job properly? And is the basmala uttered on it, right? So we say, number one, Maliki and Shafi'i have no issue with that because for number one, for the Shafi'i, basmala is sunnah. Number two, for the Maliki, you can say basmala on the whole flock of chickens. The whole whatever. What do you call a group of chickens? Flock? The whole thing. Bismillah on all these thousand chickens right here. There's chickens in this room. Bismillah on all of them. Stick them on the machine and turn the machine on. The question now becomes, is it slaughtering properly? Are you there? Can you possibly be there? No. So what do you have to do? You have to take the word of the Muslim who tells you it is. So if the Muslim owner of that factory or the manager of the factory tells you, yes. Now, am I going to go to every single... Do I know where the factories are? No. Who knows where the factories are? The owner. Right? Any manager in the Muslim... Muslim, has to be Muslim. In the company tells you, yes, we observe the factories and the factories... If the chicken is not slaughtered properly, we remove it and we throw it out. That's the fard. It is obligatory. If, if I get a thousand chickens and the guy says, here's my chickens, but by the way, two of them were not slaughtered properly. We can't eat the whole thing. The whole thing we cannot eat. Right? We can't eat any of it. It's not good grammar to what I just did. You, the whole thing, you can't eat the whole thing is, we can't eat any of the thing. Right? Because that, they're shek. Okay, just no different, but different level of tahrim. But really, no difference than if I say, "Here are, there are a thousand slim jims. Nine hundred and ninety-eight are halal beef. Okay, one two khanzir. The whole basket has to be thrown in the garbage. It's not food. It's not just no. It's mashkuk fi. So, if the manager or the owner of this company tells us that. We monitor the chickens and we make sure they are slaughtered properly. I heard the Brazil thing. It's acceptable. That they... Talk into the mic. All right, turn this uh, Mr. Antoy's mic on. You have to get close to the mic, very close to the mic. Yeah. yeah pull, it. pull it, pull it. Aren't you an engineer? Pull it closer <laughs> to your mouth. There. Yeah, I heard about uh, them getting their chicken from Brazil, from uh, Sheikh in Detroit. So that's interesting that it's... It's it is an issue. Yeah. I'm telling you, it is an issue with the global supply chain. And there must be istifsar. But to what degree do we do istifsar? Do we do and say, uh, oh, al bayk is it halal? And his, the owner tells us, or the manager, or the rep. You're not going to talk to the owner. The rep of the company says, yes, all the biha halal. I would say, ah, I don't trust him. He's a Saudi or he's making a lot of money on this. I don't believe him. No. No. We believe him. Al-Muslim yusaddaq. And that's, the big, that's another difference between, you know, some people have this different view. They're like, if you don't have a beard down to here, they're not going to believe you. No, we don't say that. If you don't investigate it with yourself, no, we don't say that. Al-Muslim yusaddaq. That's it. Has he shown himself to be a fasiq, then we don't believe him. What is a fasiq? Oh, I got this halal chicken shop, but I also sell alcohol on the side. I have a, I have, I'm openly selling beer on the side, and I own that company too. You're a fasiq. You're a fasiq. Your word means nothing to me at that point. We don't accept your word. So that's when we don't accept the word of somebody. But aside from that, okay, an open fisk, Al Muslim Yusaddaq. The Muslim is believed in what he says. Unless there is a reason not to. You see that that's how we work. So it is good for us to go investigate albake.com, probably dot SA. Just tell us it's dabiha. Tell us it's halal for us to eat. Okay. You have a comment or question, Sharif? No, I don't. Yeah. Also, just because it's from Brazil doesn't uh, necessarily mean that it's not Zabiha. Yeah. For example, like um, Australia. All the lambs they come from Australia and Romania. That's the, but they do the zabiha there. Yeah, because they know that these are Muslim clients. Uh, Hajra Mahmoud is telling us that someone in my family has investigated, and al baked chicken. Although it's from Brazil, it's machine slaughtered, but machine slaughtered by Muslims in a halal way with basmala on all of them, and observing that everything is ch is is cut or no. That's the question. So that's what you're going to get into. Now. 
after you eat this wonderful al baked chicken and you have the fries and the biscuits and the coke you're going to pass out okay <laughs> you're going to have the best nap ever and it's not going to be more than 15 20 minutes because there are so many malaika there in the grounds of hajj is filled with malaika this area is called al haram that on the map right there that you see right here is al haram and is so many malaika then you're going to wake up there are wudu stations you make wudu you pray some tahajjud and do some ibadah if you are a hanafi you're going to stay the whole night till fajr then you're going to go to minna so let's let's do it in that method because that was how the prophet sallallahu did it okay you're going to go to minna and you're going to take your seven pebbles and there is a area called al jamarat and there is one main one and then there are two small ones okay you are going to do seven, throwing seven pebbles at this uh, pillar that's there. Jamrat al-Aqaba. And that is a symbolic uh, of what Sayyidina Ibrahim did when he threw pebbles at Iblis. Okay? And you're going to sacrifice an animal. Now, by the way, now, it's Eid. When, when Fajr comes up in Muzdalifa, that's now we are in the daytime of the 10th of Muharram which is Eid okay it's Eid Yom Al-Nahr it's called Yom Al-Tawriya Yom Arafa, Yom Al-Nahr the day of slaughtering now here's the sad thing is there is no more slaughtering at Hajj they could have done it right but this thing has been removed from Hajj and it is one of the wajibats that the slaughter happens within okay that area okay but you don't see it you just basically are now pushing buttons on your phone to pay for the slaughter and you never see the animal but in the ancient times you would have slaughtered there okay there at mina you slaughter now could they do it i think they could if you had if you had towers all throughout like four towers right wherever you are you go to these tall Bunch of concrete with lamps and sheep and you slaughter and you drain it. Even if you don't do it. Even if like a, a company is doing it, right? And you're paying them. Uh, fine, but at least it's happening there. Okay? And that's really what is something that you, many shiuch, they have decried this loss. So now we're talking, we're, it's the day of Eid. You've gone from Muzdalifa to Mina. Okay? And you have done the Ramil Jamarat and you have sacrificed. Okay? You are now going to go back to Mecca. And now it's daytime. Okay? And you are going to make Tawaf al Ifada. Okay? Return to Mecca on the 10th of the Hijjah. It's Yom al Eid now. You perform Tawaf al Ifada. Sa'i. Bain al Saf. Of course, Turakas after. Behind Maqam Ibrahim, then Sa'i, seven times, you fulfilled all of your arkan. Now, you shave your head. Or you shorten your hair. Either one, but the greater reward is for who shaves his head. Okay? And at that point, you are now out, you have removed your ihram 50%. You can do anything except jima, sexual intercourse. Okay? You can now clip your nails, shave hairs, okay? put on perfume, put on regular street clothes. Okay? After you've done your tawaf al ifada and your sa'i. Okay? Now, you're going to go to Mina and you are going to spend ayam al tashriq, they're called. Day 11, 12, 13. 13th is optional. The 13th is optional. But you will spend the 11th, the 12th, and 13th. And in those days, you relax, you eat, you meet the Muslims, and you do ibadah. Okay? Dua. And you recover a little bit. Okay? In the tense of Mina. Now, let me tell you something. This, the order can be slightly altered. Like what? The way we made Hajj the, with the Shafi'iyah 
is that we spend half the night at Muzdalifa, then we go to Mecca, not to Mina, and we do Tawaf al Ifada, two rakas behind Maqam Ibrahim, and Sa'i. So now we've fulfilled our arkan. Okay? And we shave our heads. Then we go to Mina and we do the Ramil Jamrat. Okay? Then on the 11th, 12th, and the optional 13th, you have only one fard to do on those days, which is every one of those days, you go, but you're not going to do only one jamra seven times. You're going to do all three. Seven, seven, seven. You, that you have one task in the day. And in doing that task, you meet people, you see people, right? And in those days, a.m. and tashriq, 11th, 12th, and then if you stay the 13th, most people leave in the morning of the 13th. At that point, you, uh, you're you going to meet people, you're going to see a lot of people, and the ummah sort of is, is all in one space. That's the beauty of Mina. The beauty of Hajj is a.m. at tashriq, and that the ummah is all in one spot. Okay. Any questions so far? If you are going back to Mecca and leaving, let's say you're going back to your hotel and leaving for good, you do tawaf al wada as a sunnah. It's not fard. So that's three tawafs we talked about. Tawaf al qudum, it's only fard on some people. Tawaf al wada, uh, tawaf al ifada, for everybody. That is the most important one. And then Tawaf al Wada. But sometimes they will take you from Mina directly to Medina, so there's no Tawaf al Wada. Okay? And there's nothing against you for doing that. Does everyone understand now how to make Hajj? So Ihram is over the moment you do Tawaf al Ifada and Sa'i. Okay? You shave your head or cut all your hairs. Either way, you can take off your Ihram. And you can shave, and you can put on aytr and everything. But you cannot have intercourse yet. Jima. Only after the ayam at tashriq are over, the 11th and the 12th, then the 13th is optional. When you leave, then you can have, you're fully out of ihram. Okay? All right. What did that sister say about the Muslim workers in Brazil? Go up uh, right above. Yeah, right there. Hajra Mahmoud says, it is owned by a Muslim and the factories all employ Muslim workers in Brazil and it is in the halal way. Good. So you can enjoy it. Now, it's not sort of fathomable that the al-bayk should be that callous towards the Muslims and feed them non-halal meat. It's not all... Uh, it's not all negative on everything Saudi. I know they're not even Saudis. They're Palestinians, by the way. al bake the owners are Palestinians. Uh, but not everything negative about a company that makes a lot of money or because they're Saudi or something like that, that everything is going to be Iblisi about them. Oh, it's, it's, it's sort of like, that would be really beyond callous and satanic to not care about uh, the, the, the Muslims that you feed that you're selling to okay. even as a capitalist it makes no sense right I, I, I'm going to get a rumor like this against me it makes no sense okay now what nullifies your ihram and, or your hajj what nullifies your hajj is missing any of the four arkan okay and jima. Jima, sex, sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse. So you can't make it up. You cannot make up for them. Okay. And ihram, what, when you null, if you make a mistake in your ihram, all right, then you do hadi. And I'm not going to get too much into hadi here. I just want to do an overview. If time goes on, we'll repeat this. We'll get into other levels of details. Okay. For example, Tawaf al Qudum. If you missed Tawaf al Qudum and you owed it, you could do Hadi. Staying at Muzdalifa. If you miss that, 
do hadi. Throwing the jamarat, hadi. Shaving or trimming your hair, hadi. Okay. If you do the stoning before you shaved your hair, the stoning before to offer ifada, so you got the order wrong. If you didn't stay at Mina, Hadi. So you do Hadi for these obligations. These are obligations. All right? You do Hadi for them. Hadi again means slaughtering. And by the way, as I said earlier, you don't see at all the animal. You're literally buying a ticket and paying. Right? Um, Glitter says, can you wear sunscreen in Ihram if it is scent free? If it is scent free, you can use lotions and soaps that are absolutely scent free. They cannot have any scent in them. Okay. Any other questions so far? Uh, Az, did we cover everything for Hajj? We covered the map and everything? If, you want to see, if you're on Instagram, we had the map on uh, YouTube. So I don't know if the map is still it's not up anymore, but we had it up. I think over the week, if we keep repeating this, or like maybe, yeah, I maybe think we like should compile like a series. Yeah. So in case that someone has to do Hajj by themselves, we're gonna repeat. Yeah. Our our philosophy here is re- repetition. We're gonna repeat this. We'll make it into like a reference or something. Yeah. Compiled together. We'll make it a reference. If you pluck two hairs by mistake, like you literally pluck them, forgetting you're in a haram, you owe hadi. If you scratched by just a normal touch of your hair and it came out, then no. That's not what we're talking about. Because of something else, like say, for example, um, there was like mud or something like that stuck to my like your. That doesn't get you. No, it's the intentional act, out of forgetfulness. What do you ask? For each hair, do you have to pay? No, no, no. One heady. If you do in two different instances, then it would be two heady, right? Um, That's a detail I can't remember to be honest. But from what I immediately remember is no. Yeah, but so one hadi for everything yeah, basically. For, for that act whether oh, you repeat it or not okay. if a person has more than one mistake in ihram you do a separate hadi for each separate mistake not for each repetition of that mistake and you do hadi, hadi, hadi so if, if I did the same mistake two times that's still one hadi okay alright last thing that we're going to cover Hajj combined with Umrah. Now, Umrah, of course, you know, is, is only th- three arkan, which is ihram to afsai. And it is at any time. So, if you want to do Hajj by itself, that's called ifrad. Ifrad. Okay? And if you are traveling, then you have to do tawaf al-qudum. Tawaf al-qudum is the tahiyyat al-masjid of Mecca, essentially. Okay? Uh, of Hajj, of your visit to Hajj. If you are a resident of Mecca, you don't have to do Tawaf al Qudum. Or if you're on Hajj, you don't have to do Tawaf al Qudum. So, again, Qudum means arrival. So that's called Ifrad, Hajj by itself. Quran is Umrah and Hajj with one intention. And the Umrah takes the place of Tawaf al Qudum, the Tawaf of arrival. So you get to Mecca with Ihram, you make a full Umrah. And you wait a couple of days or one day until the 8th, then you go off to Mina. Remember, Hajj is the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. Okay. Yom al Tawriyah. 9th of Dhul Hijjah, Yom Arafah. 10th of Dhul Hijjah, Yom al Nahr. 11th, 12th, 13th of Dhul Hijjah is Ayyam al Tashriq. That is how many days there? Six days, but the 6th is optional. You can leave on the 6th. Mina empties out on the 13th of the Hijj. Everyone empties out. Very few people stay the whole 13 days. Uh, uh, 13th. Okay. So that's that's called Qiran. And Tamattu is that you arrive, make Umrah, but you arrived early enough, you can take your Ihram off, relax, eat, and when people do this, I'll tell you who, what the rookie mistake is. They get so excited, let's make another Umrah. Oh, let's spend all day at the Haramain, at the Haram. And they exhaust themselves until they get sick. And I'm sitting there watching this rookie make a mistake. And he's in Mina dying. Right? It's a rookie mistake. You get all pumped up about the first round of the playoffs, right? Okay? I have no energy for the second round now. 
Third round, you're dead, basically. So I saw these people doing it. I told them, but I said, okay, do it. <laughs> do what you want to do. And in Minna, they're dying, and it's bad. You do not want to be sick in Minna. I'll tell you why you don't want to be sick in Minna. There's not good food. The amount of germs that are being passed around Minna are terrible. The air condition is so high, your sore throat is going to be worse. And you can't cover yourself, right? You can't cover your head or anything like that. Or unless you're out of ihram, then you can, right? And there's a lot of nice things to be doing at Minna, such as visiting the shiuch and, and, and ibadah and arafah, right? You're missing out. You can do that. Like you can go and visit. Oh, yeah. That's what everyone does. Really? You do some ibadah, then you hear, oh, Sheikh so and so's there, let's go visit him. Come and back. They accept visitors. And everyone does. Yeah. It's a place for the ummah to meet. Um, the, when you do tamattu, you do your umrah. You get out of ihram. You should spend your time eating, resting, and doing some basic like ibadah. Of course, you're not going to ignore the haram. But to go and exhaust yourself and expend yourself, you're expending yourself in the wrong time. There's aql involved here in these things. You're supposed to expend yourself on yom arafa and in mina, yom tawriya. Do dua and ibadah and get really... Expend all of your energy on Yom Arafa and the days of Yom Al Nahr, the Tawaf Al Ifada, Al Sa'i, and Ayam Al Tashriq, which is 11, 12, 13th. Okay. That's when you really should spend all your effort. And you should be wiped out at the end of it. And the dua, you are a Hajj in terms in the sight of Allah until you arrive back at your doorstep so even if I exit Ihram and I spend five days in Medina and even if I'm going to go visit someone in my home country before I go home okay I'm still in the sight of Allah a Hajj and my dua is special and my ibadah is special in his sight it's not the normal time until I arrive back at my house so you should not take it lightly, this idea, this concept that khalas, I'm done with hajj. No. You are in a special state. Maqam khas Allah, until you arrive back home. Okay? Secondly, some people, the extent, the things that I saw, subhanAllah, there's an Indonesian couple. They lived in Pennsylvania. They were with us for hajj. You won't believe what they did. They went from Indonesia and they had their four kids. They went from Pennsylvania to drive to JFK Airport, two and a half hours, international airport. Took one long flight to Indonesia, 24 hour flight. Dropped the kids off at their grandparents. What are the costs, right? And then came back. What an exhausting trip. Came back all in one week, period of time, five days. And then drove back to JFK Airport to make Hajj with us. And we went from JFK, of course, we went to the Emirates. Then we went Hajj for two weeks. Then, so I'm like, oh, what's next? We get to JFK. We're staying in a hotel. Then getting back to JFK. Then back to Indonesia. Why didn't they just... You can't. The way Hajj is, you can't book the flights you want. you got to be with your group. At, that was the old. Oh really? So even you now. Take your own flight. And even now, you. I guess now maybe you can. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have updates for you. The prices are not what you think. All the prices that my friends got back, what was advertised? Oh, nice five thousand dollar hedge, wonderful, right? No, it's not. You're paying maybe eight thousand, right? And I had a friend of mine, him and his wife for platinum. Thirty thousand dollars. What? 15k each how what happened I should give Hidden fees is that what it is That's hey Rai if I send it to you now can you put it up yeah so, the, so that you can get the proof evidence wow. okay let's send it look at this absolute and utter I mean it's a ridiculous fee subhanallah 30 thousand okay here we go i'm going to send you the first page he's they gave him six page pdf 
a six page PDF of the prices that he could he could pay. I'm gonna send it to Ryan right now and he could put it up. Okay. What should I send it to your WhatsApp or your email? Email. All right. So that you could see. Did you think that the the profit margins were gonna just disappear? How naive. No one buys a business or takes over a business and sees the profit margins except he wanted it for himself. You think they're doing charity for you? SubhanAllah. So you went basically essentially from the um, uh, the Muslims managing the Muslims to now KSA taking it all for themselves. That's essentially what you went for. All right. Now, I didn't mention one thing here because it's sort of not really like a thing that happens for us, which is hunting. Okay, and of course, hunting nullifies the ihram. Okay. Even killing a fly? No, no. Some, something that would harm you, no, but you should not kill anything unless it actually will bring harm. All right, let's see. What we got on YouTube and on Insta. Subhi, um, which days of Dhul Hijjah do we fast? We, we who are not going on Hajj will fast the ninth without doubt. We do not miss the ninth. Okay? And if as a lesser Sunnah, the first through the eighth. Okay? As a lesser Sunnah, the first through the eighth. Okay? The first through the eighth. What else? The Sheikh Hamza Karamali has joined the uh, Sharaf Azim Lanna and the Sheikh Hamza Karamali and Ash Tanweer Institute are watching and feel free to please call in as well anytime. Sheikh Hamza Karamali, let me tell you if you want to study the proofs of the existence of God and the truthfulness of Islam, go to his YouTube channel. Um, just type in Hamza Karamali on YouTube. I always, the first thing when people they want to study, I say go to Hamza Kar Karamali's YouTube series on the proof of the existence of God. The rational basis. Why? Because we're rational beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pin has his zahir. A zahir. Who a zahir wal batin, right? He is the outwardly manifest and the inwardly hidden. What does that mean? His Certain attributes of his are outwardly manifest. His existence outwardly manifest by observing and thinking outwardly manifest. What's inwardly hidden? Many of his purposes. We need a prophet to teach us this, right? So some things are inwardly hidden. What's even in, more inwardly hidden? Al-Ma'rifah. The people who do suluk, they, can, they will be uncovered for them. The the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he huwa al-zahir wal batin. So I highly, highly recommend everybody, uh, as soon as this live stream is over, you go to Hamza Karamali's YouTube channel. Okay. And All right, let's see the prices of this uh, operation here. You like these prices? Look at that. Read it to me, Oz. Read it in the mic. What is that? Oh, Ryan, you can read it if your mic is close to you. 29 that's uh, for two people 29,555 30,697 31,200 28,319 all right so 28 tw is a 29 30 31 wonderful pricing here if you're no 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 this is not Saudi reals this is dollars Saudi reals no this is dollars. Okay. Oh, I have something else to say. That is so terrible. In my opinion. Okay. And I think in the opinion of all the Muslims. Hey, Ryan, I'm going to send you another picture right now. I'm like a picture sending machine to Ryan today. This is the, the error that people are receiving when they try to aim. Oh, they're all getting error messages yeah. until recently they were getting error messages which I don't know how recent it is, but they were all getting error messages. They couldn't make the payment. As we, we assume that the, the, the thing is going to be... Uh, gonna huh? 
I mean, websites going to crash it's a lot of people. Well, yeah, I mean, you have at least a million. Yeah, yeah. Like if I judge from two years ago, trying yeah. to. Yeah. All right, Ryan, I'm sending you another picture from TRT Worlds. And we're going to announce, we're going to talk about that too. It's like bad news Monday with these people. People say, oh, you're extra hard on them because you don't like their Wahhabi Aqidah. I said, you're right. (laughs) 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 It's true though. This stuff is not good for the Muslims though, right? This is not a uh, Aqidah thing. But it's not true. to, To be honest with you, glad though that Ahl Sunnah do not are not embarrassing us like this. Okay, <laughs> Subhanallah. All right, right. Check your your email now and stick that up there. This is really bad news, in my opinion, if you ask me. You should be actually able to trim that picture, by the way, Ray. Yeah, there you go. Ray is an OBS using machine now, bro. Wizard of Oz and, and Rai are OBS software using machines. Look at this. This is the rule now. Hey, uh, Yassin, could you, Shreve, one of you, could you pull up the article from TRT World? You are no longer allowed to touch the cow, but this is a sunnah for us, and this is not, a, because the Prophet used to do this, right? He used to put his whole body on the cow, but he used to touch a ruknan yamani, kiss a hajr aswad. And it is a thing of desperation that many people used to go and they feel the desperation that they put their hands up and touch the Kaaba. It's an expression of the heart of your desperate need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is now the law or a new policy that you are not allowed to touch the Kaaba. Who's pulled up the um, article for this? Sharif, what do you got? Huh? TRT, you're an engineer, aren't you? You should know how to use the internet. TRT, <laughs> not allowed, touch Kaaba. If I get it before you. <laughs> visiting Kaaba uh, in the metaverse, fatwa, not real hajj. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not. Okay, Saudi Arabia has now banned. Here, Go News India. Of course, now we have to get our Hajj news from India. What is this with India? But they're the first one that popped up. GoNewsIndia.com Look, the new Hajj restrictions on touching the Kaaba. They're happy, right? They're happy that they're the ones reporting on all of our calamities. After banning foreign travelers, and you get me the TRT because I'd rather read it from the Turks. Uh, There's this Middle East Eye. Middle East Eye, give it to me. They also like... Okay. After banning foreign travelers for the Hajj pilgrimage this year, now Saudi Arabia has also banned kissing and touching the Kaaba during the Tawaf. The Saudi Arabian government agency issued a statement saying that during Tawaf, it is mandatory for social distance. So the, the Kaaba is going to get COVID? Uh, <laughs> and maintaining a distance of one and a half meters from each other. But you don't have that for your, con- your concerts? Right? For all your ridiculous concerts that you have. Okay? Aisha is saying that we can't pay these prices. They're not competitive prices. We're left in the dark because there's no guide. You have no clue what you... Yeah, you, you have, you, that's exactly what happened. You have no clue what's going to happen when you get there. And when you do get there, don't come near the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now listen up. The health agency for disease prevention control. This is, wallahi al a bunch of nonsense. In a view... Of the, in view of the coronavirus pandemic, there has been a ban touching the Kaaba. Okay, when you have escalators, do you ban people from touching the side of the escalator? What's the difference? Doorknobs, it, right? It's been for a while, though, for almost since 2020. Yeah, but there's an extra announcement now because of the, like a reminder. There has been a ban on touching the Kaaba for Hajj, starting uh, during the Hajj this year to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Okay. All right, so clean it between prayers. All right, okay, I, I can, here's the thing. I can maybe, maybe see where that, they're coming from on that respect of, but the coronavirus, is it a thing anymore? 
right? That affects area. public policy? It's not a thing anymore that affects public policy. But it's just like uh, something that the sim- symbolism of it is really bad. What else we got? Anything else? A lot of comments here. All right, let's go to the comments section. Before we begin the comments, today we're going to, inshallah ta'ala, um, remind you all to be part of this by going to patreon.com backslash Safina Society. Be part of this and uh, be a contributor to this uh, uh, live stream that we're able, and inshallah, we have the intention to make this live stream. Up. This is a permanent thing now, inshallah. No going back. Monday through Thursday, we stream to the Ummah and to the, our little community of Muslims so that we can learn our deen and, and talk to each other and get to meet each other and encourage each other. And you know, like, it's always nicer to read bad news together, right? <laughs> <laughs> and to hate on Saudi t- together. You know I'm a big yeah, hater, yeah. right? Oh, I'm a big hater, right? Are, are you allowed back in Hajj? Huh? I'm allowed. I'm a small, small time. Alhamdulillah. We're not like Yasir Qadi, who's, who's, who's got banned from Umrah for really? saying, oh, yeah, he did. Wow. Yeah. yeah, he spoke out with a wonderful khutbah about Al Saud, these people are munafiks, they're not of Islam because what they had done, I uh, can't even remember the issue, what they, I think they supported Israel, Israel. over Gaza, right? Uh, things like that, that he got banned, but he's, he got let back in after that, right? So because they got pulled some strings. But uh, all those big guys I have he's to worry about that stuff. That's right Qadi? Yeah. Like the Salafi hit list, you're probably like on the second level. Saudi hit list, he's on the Saudi hit list, he's on the Salafi hit list. The Salafi hit list. He's on a lot of the, the bros hit list. Who's on right? the Salafi hit list? Oh, yes, Mike, he's at the top. Yeah, like, who else? <laughs> but it's like all those lines, Dr. Shadi, Jonathan Brown. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's Salafi hit list, but then there's the right all, the right bros, or what do they call themselves? Ak right. Uh, uh, yeah. Ak right? Is that. Because be, because of the saying that it's a valid ijtihad to discuss allyship with Qomaluts. Oh, oh, that's what understand. that's what got uh, yeah. uh, them on that the alt right hit list, right? Well, I, I I'm against that. There's no coming near Qomaluts with a ten foot pole. No, oh, the only one at the top is Yakin. <laughs> oh, Yakin's <Yaquin's laughs> of course at the top of the oh, alt right <laughs> hit yeah, lists, yeah. of course. So. Our, po- our official policy, if Allah tortured a people for something, don't come near them. I don't care what. Okay? I do not care what. Okay. Is your article still up? Oh, uh, here, talking that mic. It's not up because Jonathan Brown took his p- position, opinion back. Oh. I mean, he retracted the opinion. Oh. Yeah, so it's done. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's why it took it off. they took it off. Oh. Okay. They, his mind? Yeah, I think he changed his mind on it. Then why didn't like he write it like a uh, retraction or something like that? I think he actually uh, did make statements on the Muhammad Hijab podcast to that effect. Because the whole job was to see if we could convince him. And he did change his opinion on the Muhammad Hijab podcast. That's what I remember. That's what we talked about beforehand. That like it's not going to be a, a battle and a debate and a fight. That's why I didn't like lunge at him. And in forbidding wrong, <laughs> commanding right, forbidding wrong. In, you read those books, they say that if the person is willing to, to discuss and change his opinion, you don't attack him anymore. That's why I didn't go on the attack. They got upset. Oh, you didn't attack him hard enough. I don't care what you're saying. I know what I'm doing, right? And he did walk his opinion back, right? And he's honest. I've never seen a guy be more honest, to be honest, uh, and ch- changing his opinions in public in front of people more than him. Like he's done it with me several times. Not with me, like in front of me, I should say. Like, not that I've convinced him, but in front of me, he's done it many times. Like, I've seen his posts on it. I've talked to him, and he, he says it. He says it. I, I, I'm not going to be stubborn on a wrong opinion. I'll change my opinion, right? I've been doing thousand, 2,000 salawats a day, says Azdiman. 1,000 consistently. 1,000 consistently is the sunnah of the ulama. Where did they get that? From Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He said do it every Friday. But the ulama did it every day after that. And that is, we see that many, many ulama are doing that. And there's so many blessings from it. Oh, so many blessings to do the salawat on the Prophet every day. Okay, uh, Ya Sharif, 
please open up the calendar, your phone, and get us when is Dhul Hijjah scheduled. Khala White, can we fast from the first to the ninth? Yes, the fasting of the first of the, to the eighth of Dhul Hijjah is a light sunnah, but the big sunnah. Sunnah, very strong sunnah. Mu'akkad of fasting is the ninth. Yom Arafah, we never miss on Yom Arafah. Uh, and of course, the tenth of Dhul Hijjah is Eid. Eleventh of July. And we're, we're starting to look at 11th of July as the, be- the beginning. No. No, that's, that's it. that would be Yom Arafah, right? Yeah, yeah, Day of Arafah. Yeah, Day of Arafah would probably be around the 11th of July. We'll wait until... What day of the week? What day of the week? What day of the week is that, young uh, Sharif? Let's say July 1st is Dhul Hijjah. Mm. So, so that July and Dhul Hijjah are actually matching almost exactly, pretty much. Abdul Hadi, open QA. Yes, you can put in any um, question you wish. It does not have to be related to um, this topic of Hajj. July 1st is a Friday. July 1st is a Friday. When is the tenth? When is the ninth of the Hijjah scheduled so far? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Wonderful. We're going to have a massive iftar at the masjid. And BIC. Every year, this is one of my favorite days, the fast of Yom Arafah. As Nika says, was Qawm al punished because of their deviance or because they rejected Prophet Lutz? All, all the same. All of the above. But the, the, the nature of their punishment was determined by the nature of their sin. So you're going to be punished either way, right? Because you rejected your Prophet. But how are you going to be punished? The severity of the punishment is based upon the nature of your sin. Okay. Who's, who's Jake? Are there benefits of reciting the names of Allah? Of course, your du'a will be answered. Why? Because the Prophet said, the Quran says, <laughs> Whatsoever you make du'a for. This is the permission that you can make du'a for anything. He has the most beautiful names. What does that mean? <laughs> Everything that you ask for, one of the d- divine names, one or more, is the key to your istijaba. Now, if you don't know which one it is, then you recite all of them. Okay. I did hear, I did hear a story of Imam in Saginaw. He was talking about how when trying to call upon Allah with these names, you should be kind of careful. So there was this guy, he was just saying, like, I've had, I've had, like, calling upon Allah with this, and everyone around him just started dying, like, one by one. So uh, You should not repeat one specific name unless you have been educated upon it, upon it but you should recite all of them. They will give you a multivitamin. If you keep, don't don't we humans need salt? Don't we need sugar? But if you keep eating salt all day, you're gonna get sick, right? If you keep eating beef all day, you can't digest. So if you keep eating greens only, you're gonna get anemia, right? So you have to have a balanced diet. If you're ignorant upon the names, do a balanced diet. All right, here are some questions. What is the ruling on using smileys and emojis in the Madiki method? Permissible. I went to Umrah in December last year. There's a big barrier that you cannot kiss Al-Hajar Al-Aswad or touch it or walk around maybe three, four meters. Only the wheelchairs. SubhanAllah. All for the sake of Corona. So tell me something. So the doorknobs, you know how many things are touched? Why don't you just wipe it down after every... I'm not going to get into it. Yes, I get the argument about not spreading the virus. I get it. Okay. I saw saw a picture of online of... People maintaining six feet on their lines to board, then we're all sitting beside ourselves in the airplane. Like, yeah, it's silly. <laughs> well, like some of these COVID uh, things were silly. Six feet on line to get on the plane, six inches when you're on the plane. How does it make any sense? Abdul Hadi, as a Gen Z who might not be able to buy a house, trying to go to Hajj now is another headache logistically and financially. You're not obligated if you can't afford it. Ruh Muhassar says, speaking of Qawm Lut, what do you think of their new video? They try to position themselves more clearly. I didn't wa- watch it fully. All right, I have, uh, uh, I have no doubt that they're upon the Sunni position on the action and the beliefs on the action. I have no doubt about that. Um, but I didn't watch the video myself. I haven't watched it. I, I wanted to watch it. I intended to watch it. But to, to start off, I don't have a doubt that 
those members believe it is haram and that we must say it's haram like I have no doubt that they have those beliefs okay. is thinking that Allah loves you husn al-dhan or kibr we should we have the right to believe that Allah wants good for us and he loves for us to be upon the good okay what you should say is Allah has honored me by seeking knowledge because the sign that Allah loves a person is that he gives him knowledge okay he makes you try to be sincere he makes you make dua and try to do istighfar so you should be saying Allah's giving me is being generous to me okay and yes if that's mingled that action is mingled with the husnadan that Allah loves you that's allowed that's not kibbutz but if you're doing acts of disobedience and you're preferring ignorance over knowledge and you're away from the ummah cutting yourself off from the ummah and you have all those signs and you don't go to masajid and you do haram and you say Allah loves me that is really more of a trick of iblis like um, uh, the dude that you all uh, all the teenagers like um, from Patterson Who's that? DJ Palestinian DJ DJ Khaled, DJ Khaled <laughs> with <laughs> He's from my well. He's from Patterson originally, though. Is he? Wow. Yeah, and he's got this mansion, and he's got all these women swimming around in bikinis, and he's listening to to, to, to music and saying, "God loves me. Look at this. Look what He's given me." We say, "Brother, uh, you have a great spirit to you, but you are in istidraj right now. <laughs> istidraj means thinking you're going up. You're actually." going down to be honest with you he said, right. I, he said I pray more than 10 times a day oh I, do you pray 5 times a day I pray more than 5 times a day <laughs> all day I'm praying oh my gosh uh, he's comedic he's got like a nice fun spirit to him that's why everyone loves him yeah. but he's like also in his tadraj at, at him they're not laughing with him yeah he doesn't realize he's the butt of so many jokes uh, and it, but it's, it's he tadraj he doesn't care he's making so yeah. much money is he, is he himself mocking or is he actually sincere about that I can't be sincere about that you can't I, be I saying look at all these sincerity. bikinis around me Allah loves me I mean that's like a mockery of the whole thing I guess he's taking his blessings you know the woman the money and he's saying that's is to the rush. that's not blessings <laughs> that's a Freudian slip maybe but that's not blessings <laughs> you gotta wait till you die and go to heaven first uh, okay Yasir Qadi what's up with Yasir Qadi I'm not going to speak about Yasir Qadi unless you ask about a specific thing, statement, and I can speak on the ruling, on my opinion on it or what I have been taught about it. But to speak in general about my colleagues like this, it's not a, a way to do things unless the person is like actively misguiding on something. Then I'll talk about that point itself. Yeah, Sheikh Yusuf said, like, this is one of the worst questions to ask. Yeah. And though people, 10 years, well, what do you think of this person? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you're what, not supposed to do one that. One thing he did bring up, I think it was the video on dogs. Yeah. Where he kind of made like Ibn Abd al like his... The ruling on the Madiga Madam? Yeah, like are we allowed to keep dogs in the house? And he brought a statement from him saying that, oh, just putting it there without like a knee, like a hajj. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just makruh. No, that's wrong. But for any benefit, then khalas, then it's permissible. No, that's not the correct fatwa in the Madiga Madam. Yeah. It's not always a good thing to go and ask people about their colleagues for a couple of reasons number one you'll never be objective yeah right colleagues cannot be objective that's the first thing secondly we can discuss the point but to discuss to, to ask to comment about a person is just going to create fitna even yeah. sorry to, but even in terms yeah. of like jarh wa ta'adil mm -hmm. like the statement of a peer is not yeah, of taken into account way back in the science of hadith the statements of peers is taken with a grain of salt anyway but I have to say as a uh, to say the good you know, to say something good, of course, you can always say something good. Uh, the character of a person who's like honest, and when you deal with him, he's one of the best people to deal with. He's honest, he's open, there's no two facedness about him, right? Uh, character, his preaching on, you know, taqwa in general, those clips are great clips. Eloquence as well. Yeah. Now, a uh, point of, and his, his, his political openness, right? A point of knowledge, a point of fatwa, of course, it can be discussed. And there, there could be differences, no problem. Right. Is the Prophet Muhammad king of both worlds? Of course he's king of both worlds in the sense of, uh, as a, the, the, yeah, he's greater than that. A king is less than 
Sayyid al Kawnain is his name. He's the chief in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of both worlds. And a king is less than that. And that doesn't necessarily um, in, encroach upon Allah's attribute of king. Of course, Allah is the king of all kings. He's Malik, uh, al -muluk, Malik al Muluk. If we are struggling with a sin, like backbiting, or we fall, keep falling back into it, is it wrong to ask for halal while we haven't fully come out of the haram? If you are making tawbah for your sins, it is as if you have no sins. So you, yes, you may fully make dua, have no haraj, no shame, no worries, making dua despite the fact that you have some sins that you're trying to repent from. Again, uh, Saeed Khalifa, Aqida blunders in a debate between Jake and this Ismaili guy. Did not watch the debate. Did not watch the, de the debate. Okay. Muhammad Masood is making a complaint about the Hajj packages that you're stuck on the set number of days. Like you can't necessarily make it 20 days, 18 days, it has to be 22 days. That's another issue. Islamic books mention hadith and poets' wisdom. Do we have to apply the tajweed rules? No, only when you read the verses of the Quran, but we do not apply tajweed rules to hadith. No. You do not have to do that. But there are certain tajweed rules that are actually harder to avoid. Yeah. So, idgham, you will always do that, right? All right. Certain idgham, you will do it naturally. But the mudud and the qalqala and iqlab, no. Ikhfa, probably not. Like, ikhfa, for example, manfis sama. It's sometimes easier to say manfis sama. Right, So some tajweed rules come naturally You can do those Because it comes naturally Not because you're doing tajweed And why do we do that? Because we don't want the Quran to be confused with anything else So you should not recite any other text With the tajweed rules So that people might think it's Quran The question I had on tajweed is that sure. Why is it that we don't read like dunya as Like dunya Like we don't say uh, Uh why don't you have the word dunya? Yeah, as dunya, like the noon and the yeah, you kind of merge them together. Um, okay, hold on. Dunya, noon sakina. Yeah. Yeah. Noon sakina. That's actually a good question. It's the idram is on noon sakina and tenween. Followed by the yeah, that's actually a good question. So I I did hear um, who? So he yeah. he gave like a it shows like the how like explicit and how like the imams were detailed in detailing these things that that's how they just like revealed it just like that. Okay. And they weren't selfish about creating these rules and making everything conform conform to what they had. So no, that's a very interesting question. That's a very interesting because it does fulfill. It's noon sakina, followed by ya, but we do not do an idram of the word dunya. So that is a very good question. Zogs? What do you say? I would lose its meaning if you didn't pronounce the dunya. Yeah, that's true. But is he quoting somebody for that? I'm sure he's quoting somebody, yeah, right? Probably, yeah. Zag says dunya is one of those special words. Since when is Zag bringing out gems like this? Zag, since when are you coming out with these gems? Never knew this. I'm going to have to talk to him next time we meet. Caitlin says, how do we reconcile the statements? Actions are by intentions, and actions are judged by their endings. The action, in, the intention is needed for the validity of actions and for the acceptance of the action. So, the correct intention is needed to make the action valid. But the purity of the intention is needed so that Allah can accept it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the second intention that will be revealed and reflected in the ending of the result. So for example, as we see for example, Imam al nawi gathers the 40 Nawi hadiths. Okay. His purity of his intention is reflected in the fact that this hadith's 
is widespread and the qabul is there. Okay? That's what it is. You see that? Someone's comments help. I have anxiety over the principle not deeming someone a kafir in of itself is kufr. So he says, I get very worried whenever a commoner says something problematic. Especially if I don't know if something is kufr. The hadith that whoever calls someone a kaf... Wait, wait, could you scroll up, Ryan? Let me see that right quick. Uh, not deeming a kafir a kafir is itself kufr. Of course it is, right? For example, you can't say a Christian is not a kafir. Because that means you're saying the Trinity is acceptable in Islam. Right? So, if someone is a kafir in... Like asli, like kafir. Yes, asli. he's a kafir. Not by the fatwa of the person, right? Because he did that, he's a kafir. You don't have to worry about the fatwa. You don't have to investigate that. That's not what it's talking about. And, and takfir is very detailed, so unless it's like a, someone who's a Christian, like he's, like you know he's a kafir. Like yeah. That person and we're can, kafir to them too, so yeah. don't, you don't have to be offended. <laughs> yeah. You're not offending him. You're a kafir to him yeah. too. Right? And like people get offended, like you're calling me a kafir, like yeah, you're, you are a Muslim basically. So Yeah, I mean, uh, we're kafir to you too, so. Uh, Do they we're, actually believe that? Because it seems like a lot of these heretical groups they're like, no, Sunnis are Muslims. You, like, you know, we would consider them Muslims. Who is that? Like, I think the Ismailis say the same thing. The Shias say the same thing. Shia. Yeah, okay, then that's their, that's their problem. But it feel, I feel as if they want to be part of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So, or like in the sense that they want our approval. Yeah. So they, they want to be included. So they say, oh, you guys are part of the same group. It's um, impossible that the Shia accept us. Yeah. Their creed, we go directly against their creed. Like we're 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 going against their creed 100. Mm. percent So we're mubtadia at the minimum, according to them. So it's just like, I don't want to say the politics. Word. Yeah. Maybe it's just politics. Maybe the T word, taqiyah. Taqiyah. Oh, it's always taqiyah. Yeah. <laughs> if you have taqiyah somewhere in your doctrine, I can't believe anything you say, right? This is also one of the things why it is impossible. It is haram. It is kufr. Rejected. The concept that it is possible for Allah to lie, then when He says the truth and He said, "This is I'm truthful in this statement," how do you know that's not a lie? That is circular. It's circular, so it cannot even be a possibility. Because how would you then know that any other statement is truthful? Okay, if I tell you, "Hey, I've told many lies, but this is true," how do you know that this one is true? When I'm a liar, right? Or I have a possibility to lie. All right, let's. Go up now. Um, Muhammad Azaghi has a Quran teacher. Okay. That's, how That's how he knows that. And also, someone else is saying that within the word, these rules don't apply. Is that the, is that how you? Okay, let me think. Kuntum yeah. So it's not about being in the word. For example, kuntum ta'lamun ikhfa within the word. Right. A B C D E F G says. What does it mean from an Islamic book better to memorize two words than listening to two volumes? It means that you have better understand what you read than read a ton of books. That's what the, that saying means. I never heard that saying, but that's what it means. Can you scroll up? Read the, uh, yeah. Zog, what do you say? No, there's no someone to say. No, but no. He said, he said dunya, what? This is a rule of Ithar mutlaq. It's in the, yeah. Ithar mutlaq will be done for dunya. It's in the Tajweed rules book. Okay, so they just created a word for that. They called it Ithar mutlaq, ithhar mutlaq because it's an exception. It's down there. Wait, go up. Dunya wa. Dunya wa dunyan wa sinwan wa kunwan la yukbitu alayhim ilhamu naqtatan wa la. Bikunna. Bro, Zogs is now pulling out quotes. Next thing he'll have a PDF a screenshot, <laughs> right? All right, great, Zog, great job, Zogs. So these are exceptions within the Quran. Okay, these are exceptions to the rule. Dunya, wa bunyan, wa sinwan, wa qinwan. La yutbaq alayhim idhamun bi ghunnatin, walakin nu'amiluhum kavahirin, ka idharin mutlaqin. Excellent job. Yeah, you Zag for coming up with that. Okay. No, kuntum is ikhfa. Right? So ikhfa does apply uh, in the word. 
I don't sh maybe there's other examples of Okay, here's Ruh Muhassar. لا يكون الإدغام إلا بين كلمتين فإذا جاء في كلمة واحدة فإن حكمه الإظهار Thank you very much. Yeah. Now I understand what Ruh Muhassar was saying is that إخفاء may be in the word but not إدغام because you would actually lose the meaning of the word. الدنيا فإننا لا ندغمها بل ننطق النون مض... آه بالإظهار يعني okay. Excellent job يا روح محصر and محمد زاقبي okay. Well done with your research there All right. Nimra if you can get professional help that would be great Oh, she's talking to somebody else there's conversations between people about mental health and may Allah help everyone for mental health and by, and I don't know if it's mental health or counseling but we do have this sister Reed that's always here and her friend I think her name is Dana that they are counselors you could check them I don't know if they're still on if you're still on uh, post yourself is Hizb al-Bahr in al-Khulasa yes Anam I'm an artist, so I have a problem. These ideas are always popping up in my head during prayer and adhkar. I struggle with it. Sometimes I feel I want to quit my profession. I think that if you strengthen your remembrance of Allah outside salah and your recitation of Quran outside salah, it should outweigh the images that you're designing in your mind. So if you're designing an image in your mind, graphic, whatever you're designing, but your remembrance of Allah is heavier, it should outweigh it. Excuse me. Ismu Abu. Ismu Abi, it should be. Your Arab. Yeah, Ismu Abu here. Your Arab is wrong here. It should be Ismu Abi. Would you be able to say a few words on Sayyidina Al Khidr? I can tell you that many, many reliable, strong ulama say he's a very unique figure in Islamic history that lives on until Akhiru Zaman and he dies. And this is a very, very unique story okay, uh, that we have in Islamic literature. And you will not, you'll, you'll see that uh, in the Surah Al-Kahf. Ibn Kathir mentions it. Uh, others mention it. That, If I'm not mistaken, Ibn Kathir mentioned it in Surah Al-Kahf. If not, maybe it's in his Bidayah and Nihayah. And many others mention that Al-Khidr is a unique figure. He's not a human. He's a human, but not like us. He, he lives differently and he lives on for a long period of time traveling the earth doing khidmah to the ummah Wallahu ta'ala alam By the way, this is not a primary point of aqidah Which is what? Khidr? Yeah. No, it's not a aqidah point at all Okay, Ruh, al -muha Ruh Muhassar says Okay, it means it is treated as if it is idhar mutlaq not it is not idhar mutlaq What else we got? So Ruh Muhassad is saying, Zags, your usage of the kaf is wrong. Kaf is just for tashbih. Ka'idhar right. mutlaq. Um, so I think Ruh Muhassad is saying, it is idhar mutlaq. Not like idhar mutlaq. Okay. Fair enough. We covered a lot today. Here's Nimra Fatima says, if a parent shouldn't prefer one child over another, why did Yaqub prefer Yusuf over his other sons? His big bro brother's biggest complaint was Yaqub loved more, uh, Yusuf more. He didn't treat them with his time or his money or his actions better. But you cannot control your heart. Okay, You can't control your heart. And this, there's signs of that. Nobody can stop it. Okay? They used to all say, we know the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves Sayyidina Aisha more than anyone else. Okay? You cannot control that your face lights up. You cannot control your smile. You cannot control your mood. You can control your money, your words, and your muscles. Okay? And that's what Allah will ask us about. You cannot control as much as you should. Try, but you cannot control your other things related to you. Like, can't control that. I just got happy all of a sudden, right? You can't control that. So, that's what Allah will ask us about. And 
the the prophets at the, or the brothers of Yaqub they recognize that he loves Yusuf every time Yusuf comes it's as if like they see the the, the uncontrollable things about a person's face that uh, they see there when Yusuf comes in Minna says it is is it obligatory for women not to cut hair etc during ihram so the yes it, it would nullify your ihram they're obligated to re- restrain themselves from cutting their hair clip their nails things like that yes okay Ruh Muhassar, great job with the Tajweed questions. Sheikh Saeed Nursi says that Al-Khidr has a type of life called Malakuti, angelic life. He doesn't eat or sleep, he just remembers Allah and he goes around and he does these things. Yes, it is. Uh, that's what they say, yes. All right, folks, we're going to stop here. Nice Q&A and it's good to be back. Jazakumullah khairan, everybody. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept this live stream from us. May Allah give us ikhlas and grant us beneficial knowledge. All of this week we will be doing revisions about Hajj. Okay. All this week, not the whole time, but we'll review this over and over so that you all really know your Hajj inside out. And we will close off by mentioning Mecca books. They have an amazing book coming out called The Exemplars. You can get it from there. It's biographies of people who we hold, inshallah, we have the good opinion that they're from Awliya'illah and they're Salihin. You can read their biographies. Okay. We uh, have sponsorship from professors com. If you need tutors, if you need anyone to help you in school, math, homework, you flunked out of class, so you need to take the class over again. Yeah, seen that ever happen to you? A few times. If you had Mecca Books, uh, professors one to one dot com, that wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened, right? <laughs> so that's the benefit of professors one to one dot com. And lastly, your support to us is always invaluable. And Oz, what do you think of making credits? Yeah, that'd be really okay. good. Okay, professor uh, Mecca Books. Uh, sorry, Patreon dot com backslash Safina Society, so that we're gonna have a we're going to have to make credits at the end of every episode. Jazakumullah khairan everyone. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wal asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu amanu salihat. Wa tawasubu al-haq. Wa tawasubu al-sabr. Wa